Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. I'm bringing you my dinosaur deck profile updated since I did the Remote Duel Invitational last weekend. Uh, if you want to go check out the actual deck profile I used for that uh, for the tournament, you can go and check it out on Jamie's channel, Jamie the Kid Zero Zero. I'll put a link in the description, but we've updated it since then. The idea here isn't to give you necessarily the complete article of my True King Dino deck, but just to give you some ideas about what I've been running and how I've been doing the deck and how I feel it's been so far and things that I might consider changing. Maybe just to give you some ideas of how to play the deck for yourself. So we're going to start off with the monsters. Uh, so we are still running the three True Kings at the moment. We're running two copies of Agnimazud and one copy of Litho. The problem with this is that I don't really like, like to run too many copies of these. Ideally, I would cut one of these if I could. The problem is they do just make your hands that much better. Uh, it's a really, really strong, powerful card. And obviously being able to resolve it to pop babies and that kind of thing is really, really important. Uh, at least that's the case with this one. But being able to empty some of the clog cards from your hand and we are running a lot of like fire targets and cards that can kind of clog up stuff like Ash Blossom that this can help get rid of. But also the fact that it can help add this back to your hand if it gets popped, if you're running things like Diagram. So there are benefits to it. And of course, being able to get both of them on the field, you can go into VFD nice and easily. Uh, like I say, I would like to be able to cut this to one, but I feel like then it's just too few and you might as well not run it at that stage. Um, but this is really the important one that you want to be able to see and make use of. Next up, we're running two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. This still has the same issue of being a little bit of a brick if you see it too early. And that's why we only run the two copies. You know, ideally, want to be searching this or fetching it out of the deck, really, rather than actually hard drawing into it. It becomes a bit of a problem at that stage. And also, the fact that we're running uh, a lot less dinos than we would normally means that sometimes it can be a bit bricky in hand. Two seems to be perfect for me. I don't think one is enough because people can normally get rid of the one, but they really, really struggle if you can see two copies of this. Of course, it's a really good pill target, and we are running pill in this build, which we'll go on to shortly. Uh, and I think the two works really, really nice. Don't be tempted to go into three. I think, honestly, you'll just find yourself breaking on them more often than not. And as powerful as it is, uh, it, it's not big enough a deal that you want to be able to see them in your hand in your opening turn. We're running a single copy of Coatlas. Uh, so this is one of those cards that had obviously fallen out of favour in recent formats, but I think where the necessity for running pillars come in, uh, and the fact that this is starting to play going first a lot more now, which is generally how we're going to run this particular build, uh, having a single copy of this available to you is really, really important. Just gives you a nice negate to get on board turn one, gives you another way to get to pill, uh, and gives you some other ways to play. At this stage, I'd say this this is pretty mandatory. Three copies of Soul Eating Overraptor. This is probably the most no uh, important normal summon in your deck. This obviously can fetch your babies, which you're going to go ahead and pop. Uh, it can add stuff like Conductor Two Hand if you want to get it into there. Uh, it, can, it can just basically do everything. More often than not, this is going to be fetching you your Miscellaneousaurus or a Baby Ceratosaurus, uh, depending on what line of play you want to go for. Uh, but this is definitely your most important normal summon. It really, really sucks if they hand trap this and you can't use its effect. Uh, but in incredibly important you must play three copies of this card and honestly i think without this the deck is just dead speaking of baby cerasaurus we are running three copies this card is absolutely insane the fact that you can pop it more than once in a turn is just absolutely wild uh, you keep resolving this this plus diagram is just an insane insane full combo uh, you'll be able to see i've actually put up some combo videos at the time of recording uh, so you'll be able to go back and watch some of those if you'd like but also there's plenty of other videos out there that you'll be able to see just how insane this is once it starts going if you see one of these with a true king in hand you're normally good to go on my previous iteration list, I wasn't running Petit Pteranodon. Um, this is a nice one to actually have access to. It just gives you another way to resolve. Obviously, you can use it to pop off the True King, and it does get you a free summon. It's not quite as good because you can't attack with the monster that you get off of it. But also, when you're playing into a situation where you want to be able to get Pancratops out, say, uh, this gives you another dimension to play with the deck. Uh, just one copy is absolutely fine. It's nowhere near as good as Baby Ceratosaurus, but it is still nice to have in deck, just to have the option to play with. 
We're also running three copies of Miscellaneous Horus. This is mandatory. For those of you who did see me on the stream, you know I only ran two copies. That is literally because I lost a single copy of this card. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I went and bought another one off eBay just so I could actually play my deck properly. Uh, three copies of Miscellaneous Horus is mandatory. Don't ignore me. Uh, don't listen to me, sorry. It was not any kind of weird spice or anything like that. Three is what you must run. It's so, so important. It protects all your plays. Uh, it makes you more resilient to stuff like Nibiru. It makes it kind of like a waste of their time. Uh, but it also sets up your other plays by being able to be banished and, and summoning an Imidorn from deck, which can start you, you know, popping babies in hand and that kind of thing. It's also level four, so obviously you can build up ranked plays. And being a fire, it's another way to get Agnimazud onto the field. We've got a single copy of Giant Rex. Uh, this is a bit of a brick at times, but it's such a good extender when it does go off. Obviously, you don't really want to be normal summoning it. The, the ideal condition here is that you want to banish this and get a special summon out of it. Um, it is one of those cards that when you sit in your hand, it's kind of dead ass, unless you can get into like a pill, and then in that case, obviously, you can just banish it, and then it becomes so free. And of course, if you've got Litho in hand, it's not too bad because you can get an easy way of getting it into Grave. It also sets up rank 4 plays, which is really nice with Dolka and Lagia, which obviously we run in this particular build. Um, there is times where I feel like I wish I didn't have this in the deck, but I think it's just one of those engine cards that you have to accept that... Uh, in as much as it can be a brick sometimes, when it's good, it's absolutely insane, like so important. Um, so it's kind of one of those uh, necessary evils in the deck. We're running a single copy of Animador Narcosaur, or the Jewel Beast, as some of you might know it as. Uh, this is absolutely crazy addition to the deck. This has really helped build up this deck's ability to play going first. Um, post Echo, for those of you in the US who... I'm not sure if you guys have got it at the time that I'll release this or not, uh, but this is a, an absolutely crazy card. Some people are running it at three. I don't really like that. I think that really it's only as good as you can continue to resolve it. Um, if you decide to run like infinite negate combos and stuff like that, it can also be good because you can get some sort of relevant targets and that kind of thing with, with wing beasts and stuff to go into your Samorg link. Um, but primarily you're just using it for pill. I was running Caligo Claw Crow before, uh, which is an idea I totally took from Marty. So if you're out there watching this, mate, well done. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a great little extender, but I've decided to cut it from the deck altogether. But being able to just get another way into pill is really nice. And the fact that it pops babies just makes it even more free. It's also level one and we are running one for one in this deck, so it's nice and easy to get out if you need another way to get into it. We're running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I think in this particular format, it's really important that you have some way to play in your opponent's turn. Again, for those of you who had seen me on the stream, you'll notice I had much less interaction. That's because I'd actually built the deck for a uh, for a best of three scenario. I didn't realize the first rounds were going to be best of one, so I would have built slightly different. This is probably a bit closer to what I would have done. I would also probably ran more hand traps, and I would love to run a lot more than I'm running now. Um... But there just really isn't the space. The three Ash Blossom, I'd say, is mandatory. It hits basically every deck. It also happens to be a fire, which works quite nicely. And, of course, the fact that it's a tuner like many of the hand traps means that, as a worst-case scenario, it can become an Halka Fibrax target. We're running a single copy of Drac Aolo. This is one of those cards that, again, people have cut from their builds. But, actually, it's really important at the moment. Being a fire, being a level one, being a tuner, being a dinosaur. It has so, so much going for it. This is one of your primary targets off your miscellaneous Saurus Banish. Uh, and I think that running it at one is mandatory. Obviously, it's one of those cards that you don't want to see in your hand, but you do want to be able to summon it from the deck uh, and take advantage of the fact that you can then go into Halka Fibrax plays. I'm actually running a relatively small engine to abuse Halka Fibrax, so really I should take maybe a bit more advantage of that uh, because I do feel it's one of those things that if you resolve it, you just win. Um, but it, this is a nice way to go about your plays and get into it. And if nothing else, it's just another free extender. We're running a single copy of Jet Synchron. Uh, I mean, this just explains itself for all the same reasons that Aolo is good, but also because it can res itself, which is just absolutely insane. Uh, this, obviously, the interactions with Halka Fibrax are just absolutely wild. I think this is mandatory to play in this format, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's going to get banned. There's almost That's almost a guarantee at this stage. The question is of when, uh, and until then, we should definitely be taking advantage of it. We've got a single copy of Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line. This is a card that should get banned, but won't, because as we all know, we've got the reprint coming out, and I don't see Konami shoot themselves in the foot like that. Uh, but this is obviously just insane. We all know why this is insane. I won't go into too much detail. Uh, it just makes your play so free, and I think you have to run it again. Mandatory if you're going to run any kind of Halka Fibrax engine in any deck. 
And lastly, from Monsters in the Main Deck, we've got a single copy of Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. Uh, this, again, is just one of those cards where it's like, if I can't get to any other plays, I can get to Union Carrier, and I can equip this to a Dark or Lagia, and then usually you just win because your opponent can't play. It also happens to be a level 1, so of course it's a 1 for 1 target and all of that stuff. It is also a tuner, so if you don't really want to go down those lines of play, you can turn it into a Hulk of Fibrax target again another card that just needs to be banned it should never have been here for this format but whilst it's here we're going to take advantage of locking our opponent out of their extra deck next up we're covering the spells this is something i wasn't running in the build before uh dark ruler no more i really just don't want to have to main this card but you kind of do i mean as you saw in my second game again for those of you who watched it if you don't have this you kind of just lose i really want to sort of uh, I kind of wanted to play Nibiru, but there's a, a few issues with Nibiru. Um, the issue with Nibiru is that it gives them a rock token, which is obviously a problem for a deck that runs rocks and that kind of thing, so it benefits them sometimes. But also, I think that most people just set up a monster negate and then they don't have to worry about it. The problem with this card is it says you can't win. Like, if you play it, you can't win that turn. You can potentially set up so that they can't play going on. And, you know, I think it is definitely more powerful than Nibiru for the most part. It's definitely... Uh, one of those cards that works a lot more of the time, I would say, and that's why I'm running it in here. It is a bit of a shame, of course, that we have to admit the fact that we can't just OTK people, but I think it's a necessary evil to run it in the deck, and you just have to find space for it. And it's just a shame, because there's cards that I would much rather be running, but that's the nature of the format we're in. You have to just have access to it. Next for our spells, we're running triple copies of Fossil Dig. I've recently upgraded these to Supers, which is quite nice. So we've got Hollow Versions instead. Finally got these again. Uh, really, really important card. I don't need to go into too much detail about this. It's reinforcements of the army for dinosaurs. It's just absolutely insane. It means you're running an extra three copies of, of Oviraptor, of Miscellaneousaurus, or anything else that you really need to see. We have two copies of Double Evolution Pill. Uh, I pretty much stick by this ratio. Once upon a time, I used to run three and was pretty adamant. I don't think three is necessary. It's so searchable and you really don't want to see it in your hand outside of being searched. Um, that's when it's free. Before that, it's just a massive, massive brick. Um, it does what it needs to do. I think one is just too few. Again, three is too many. Two is just right. Now I'm going to cover all of the field spells in one single go, just so we can talk through them all, the ratios, and why I've chosen what I've chosen. So, uh, we've got one copy of Dragonic Diagram. I think that this is pretty self-explanatory. It sets up all your true kings, helps you pop babies, it just gets pretty wild. We've got two copies of Lost World. Uh, again, two seems perfectly fine. I don't like running three. It's just absolutely not necessary to run at three. Uh, it, it protects your board and that kind of thing, but you've got enough ways to get into it. We've got a single copy of Terraforming because it can access any of these, so it's like having an extra copy anyway, and set rotation for the same reason. We're only allowed one copy of Diagram being limited, so these two give you another way to get to it. I have one copy of One for One. There are so many level ones in this deck, it's unreal. It's so incredibly free. Being able to just send a monster from hand to grave to special summon a level one from deck is just busted. That's why this card is limited to one. There are so many good targets in the deck. Filling up your grave is free. And yeah, it's just insane. A really, really good card. There's a lot of people that don't play this. I really don't understand why they wouldn't. So, I mean, if you guys can think of a reason why you wouldn't play this, please let me know. But I don't see any reason not to. And then our final card is just a blank space in the deck. Upstart Goblin, because mathematically running 39 cards in your deck is better than running 40. I've had people ask me to try and justify this. That There's no justification needed. It's simple maths. If you're running 39 cards, you're more likely to see the cards that you need to see. And that's basically what this does in this deck. And that's it for the main deck. We're going to move on to the extra deck. So this is still very much a work in progress. Uh, and this is also just down to sort of flavor and taste of what you like. There's a few different variants that I've kind of tried through and maybe a bit more synchro plays to go with Harker Fibrax. But I quite like where this is at, at the moment. But again, still lots that could be changing over time. So don't take this as any kind of gospel. Just build it up however you'd like to play it. So run a single copy of Link Karibo for the same reasons as before. Just level ones. We've got a lot of them. It helps protect your boards it's another way to link climb which you know doesn't really matter so much anymore um it can just if nothing else it can just help set up pill if you just got a dead ass like one of in hand that you can just get into the grave this just gives you another material to go into 
We're running a single copy of IP Masquerina. Definitely don't just make this and pass turn. It does absolutely fuck all on its own. But when you're smart and you're not like me, you set up a board with something else to play with. It gives you a way to play during your opponent's turn. It helps protect your board. It helps give you an interrupt. Just a really, really important card. I think this is, again, one of those mandatory cards to have in your extra deck in the modern game. We have a single copy of Union Carrier. Uh, again, just equipping Dragon Buster is just insane. It's so, so free. This is incredibly easy to make. Um, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't run it whilst you've got the option to. Again, it's one of those cards that could potentially get hit down the line. Uh, hopefully it won't because I really don't think it's that broken. I just think it's quite solid. Uh, I quite like it. And, and for the foreseeable, I'll continue to use it. We've got a single copy of Christron Hulk of Fibrax. We already know how insane this card is. It doesn't need too much covering. Some people are running multiple copies of this so that they can loop through them and do all of those plays. I'm not running a massive tuner engine in this. Uh, well, sorry, a rather a massive synchro engine in this. I'm running plenty of tuners. Um, this is free enough on its own that it actually still generates you kind of some advantage and, and builds up your plays going forward. It is so much better when you've got Link Cross and I am still waiting for mine, which is part of the reason I'm not doing those plays. So that is something you should potentially include if you have access to them at the moment. Uh, but for now, just one copy is absolutely fine. Uh, it does still help advance your plays, even just on its own like that. We have the utility cards, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn. Again, I think that if you've got the space, these are mandatory to have in. Pop in spells, any kind of back row, in fact, is important. And being able to spin cards with, you know, removal that doesn't destroy is, again, very important. And, of course, being able to draw cards is always important, too. They're also generic, so what else could you ask for? We have two Link 4s in the deck as well. We've got one copy of Appalooza, Blow the Goddess, and one Boral Sword Dragon. Uh, this doesn't, in fact, neither of these come up too much, but being able to have the option to go into them is really, really nice. This is one of those cards where it's like, okay, if I can't get to anything else, if I can't maybe, maybe I've got a convoluted hand and I can't make a Dalk or a Lagia, I can make a Boral Sword and equip it with a Buster, and then they're probably not going to be able to play through that. And also, Appalooza allows you to just be able to break up your opponent's board. Again, if you can just make four links on the field, sometimes this will auto win you games against certain decks. We have the Evolzar Twins, Lagia and Dolka. Uh, again, incredibly important. You can so, so easily make rank fours in this deck. Uh, you'll normally end on one of these, usually Dolka, but obviously if you've got other negates, you can go for Lagia as well. Uh, just being able to end on either of these, especially if you can equip Buster, is just absolutely insane. But as a very basic, this is the kind of play that you want to end on, is ideally at least one of these. Really, really broken, still really, really strong. Uh, both, uh, you know... Take dinosaurs to make both fires, so of course you can set them off the True King Agnimazud and all that kind of stuff. Just really, really important cards, I think, to have available in the deck. If you want to create space, this is probably the one you can cut. I think Dolka is crazy important in the modern format. Our last rank four is Abyss Dweller. Again, just crazy important in the modern game. I think that any deck that can make this should really be running it as long as they can create the space too. Uh, this shuts down certain decks. It just ends turns. Uh, if you can make your opponent pass on turn two and then turn three, you just go ahead and kill them. This can help facilitate those kind of plays. We already know how strong this is and it doesn't really need much more elaboration on that. Our last XE monster, True King of All Calamities. This card does not belong in the game, but again, as long as it's available to us, we will continue to make use of it. Just being able to stop your opponent basically playing for the entire turn is wild. It's a massive body. It's easy to make. Just, it's pretty self-explanatory. We've got a single copy of Coral Dragon. It's questionable whether we actually need this in the deck or not. It's just one of those cards that I'm kind of running as a bit of a placeholder. I think once I go into the lineup of more synchro targets, I'll probably stop running this. Um, you can make it off Needle Fiber during their turn, so it, it does have that advantage of being able to just uh, discard a card and then just pop one. Uh, being able to draw a card as well is just quite nice. It just gives you a few more options. Again, it's not ideal, so probably could be replaced with something a little bit better. Uh, that's, of course, according to your taste, it's just what I have available to me at the moment. And then our final two synchros, the two big boys that can overlay into VFD, both absolutely insane. Trish just looping your opponent's hand and stuff turn one is wild. If you go second, it breaks up their board, their graveyard, everything as well. Uh, this just allows you to draw cards. It's just both of them are really, really strong contenders for different reasons. I think under different scenarios, different things are good. Um, both really, really fantastic. And there are some 
uh, combos out there in which you can make both and overlaying to VFD, in which case you just win the game anyway. And again, you can find those combos on my channel and elsewhere as well. So that is it for the extra deck. We're going to move on to the side deck now as well. Uh, this is going to be pretty short and sweet. There's nothing too crazy going on here. Again, we're not playing in any actual physical tournaments. Uh, obviously, remote duels are an option for those of you who want to do that. Uh, most people are playing online. Um, again, it's just kind of ideas at the moment. Just something that I'm choosing to play with for now. It's not perfect. Something you should probably work on for yourself. Just a generic token. Uh, my man Reese there. Not very important in this part. Uh, we've got a single copy of Pancratops. Apologies about the snoring sound in the background. It's my idiot pug doing his thing. Uh, Pancratops in the back. In the back. <laughs> he threw me off completely. That rest of Pancratops is great. Even if you go first, you can go into this off Petit Tyranodon, so it's an option. Of course, it can be popped off True Kings and that kind of stuff. It's a free body. We already know how strong this card is. The fact that it's been played in every deck in the side deck when it was at three tells you exactly how strong it is. In Dinos, again, I think it's just mandatory to have at least in your sideboard. We have triple copies of DD Crow. Uh, I think this is one of the sleepers of the format. There's so many important grave-based decks that DD Crow might be able to do a job. Again, there's not really been a lot of options for me to test this in full. Uh, most of the matches you're playing and stuff are kind of single rounds and uh, not best of three. So you don't always get to do the side in. But in theory, these seem quite nice to me. We had two copies of Call by the Grave. These were main deck before. I decided to drop them to the side because I needed to find some space for Dark Ruler No More, amongst other things. Uh, again, it's just in theory, it seems quite nice. Decks that are hand trap heavy, this helps protect you. Decks like Eldritch suffer to this. Adamantopeta can suffer to this. And for the same reasons, a DD Crow is quite strong as well. We have triple copies of Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, one of the big issues in the format at the moment is Eldritch, of course. Uh, the fact that the the spells and traps do so much in the grave as well as on the field is just insane. So being able to just get rid of them out of play altogether is really important. If you're playing kind of off-the-cuff matches you're not expecting, like Salamangrate, this can obviously get rid of the field spell, amongst other things. Just leaves you in a really strong position. And I don't think at the moment just popping back row is really important. Any of the decks that are back row heavy benefit from the being in grave as well. So just being able to get rid of them banished completely is probably the best way to play it. We have triple copies of Evenly Matched, uh, much for the same reasons as Cosmic Cyclone. Being able to force your opponent to banish all their back rows is just wild. The fact that it goes face down is even better. Um, again, you can set this up going first and just like pass turn if you're in a really bad position. Uh, if you think that they're going to make you go second and make you go first, it gives you options for that kind of stuff. But if you are going second, it just gives you an, another way to break up your opponent's board and then kill them the following turn. It blows them out of resources. It's just a really really strong option we already know how crazy this card is anyway again probably doesn't need much more elaboration than that and our last three cards this is a bit of something that i'm trying out something that i tried before and decided to cut from the deck but i'm trying it again is survival's end we've all seen how many tokens are doing the rounds at the moment this is insanely free and also the fact that it has a grave effect gives you an added benefit i was actually half tempted to run trap trick in here but couldn't really justify the space at the moment but again maybe once we go back to physical tournaments i'll do just that but being able to set this and go into your opponent's turn knowing that even if they clear up your monsters they can set up as many tokens as they like you're going to massively punish them for doing so this again it's not perfect just something you may want to consider trying in your builds so that is it for the deck profile, guys. Thank you very much for checking in. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, you should definitely let me know down in the comments. If there's anything that you think I should maybe change, something I might not have considered or might not have mentioned, maybe you've got some secret spice as well that you're running that's worked really well for you, definitely let me know. Show me you enjoyed this by dropping a thumbs up on the video. And of course, if you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe. Thank you very much for checking in, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.